Over the past few years, I've begun to take stock of the things from my childhood that still remain. And they're sparse, really. My old stuffed animals I don't have the heart, the heart to throw out. That painting of The Last Supper, the nativity set, and a large comforter that should have been tossed out years and years ago. My mother laughs at me and says I'm a hoarder, but by comparison to others, I'm not so bad. I mean, my friends Chris and Steph's neighbors all cluttered. Their front porch is just littered with all sorts of bric-a-brac, and every time I dri walk up the driveway to their front door, I can't help but look to my left and just see it spill out into the grass. Boxes that look dampened from all the exposure to moisture, what with all the rain we've been getting and the innumerable times that stuff's been out in the open. That aside, I don't have that many things from my childhood. Now, I've seen those videos where people will say, Oh, look, your old bicycle from when you were 10. I had a green and black bicycle my dad bought for me sometime around 1994-95. It had training wheels on it, and for the longest time I had them on, even well after he left. My friend's dad from down the street ended up removing them, and I really felt like I was moving. But after 1998, it just seems to have disappeared. It wasn't stolen because my mother never made a fuss. And when things were stolen, she, she made a huge fuss. I also left my bike outside, out back near the trash can or the, the wheelie bin, and it got soaked when it rained. I always had to wipe it down with a towel before getting on, and well, that wasn't a big deal. But that was the one thing my mind reached for when I thought about items from my childhood. I mean, I wondered what happened to it. I mean, realistically, it's been turned to scrap. And it was an old bike, even by that time, but... It was to me, at that time, what a car is to me now. It meant freedom. It meant now you could move around and go to places you thought you could never go before. I mean, mind you, I barely went anywhere anyway. Just to the local drugstore down the street or to the park or just sitting in my room reading. The biggest relic to have vanished is my old neighborhood. Now, the last time I saw it intact was sometime around 2013, 2014, and they had begun construction in the Harris Teeter where the old shopping center used to be. And it was really sad. I mean, I really, really liked that shopping center. I mean, the neighborhood was being taken apart, piecemeal by piecemeal, turning into open space. I thought it was a shame. I mean, those tall elm trees provided a shade on summer days, and my god, does it get hot here in Charlotte. It made me wonder if the people of my generation, you know, the millennials, had a distinct dislike for trees to where they decided to cut them down for open space. I mean, we like open spaces, but we seem to hate clutter. And that's personified in trees. I mean, maybe that explains why they got rid of crossroads and installed roundabouts. Because they're much better than an intersection with lights. Are we doomed to live in a city full of roundabouts? But, back to the neighborhood. It seemed like before it was a time capsule, a relic of my childhood that remains. And now that's gone. I make it a habit to have a Google Maps street view pulled up showing the 2013 view of Berkshire Road. It's how I remember it and how I want it to be. I know it may not mean much, but in thinking about things now, it's as sweet a view as anything. I really get that people love to explore and see the world and say, this is the most beautiful sight ever. I mean, for me, however, just seeing my old neighborhood street on a summer day, those rectangular brick buildings gleaming in the sunlight, I mean, to me, it's the most beautiful sight ever. It's humble and self-effacing, to be sure, and I wouldn't trade it for the world. To keep those memories alive, to make sure they never go away, to keep that which is fleeting, I mean, I created a playlist on Spotify a few years ago, called Light 1 and 2.9. I mean, it's like a monk trying to preserve the works of the ancient world. I'm 
frantically trying to recall the music from my childhood and putting them in that list. I mean, it's pushing 1,800 songs, and that's no small feat. And six people like it, so, I mean, I must be doing something right. But whenever I listen to those songs, my mind goes back to sitting on the cold wooden floor right in front of the screen door as the sunlight hits it at that perfect angle, sending dust into the air, and it warms that spot greatly. I know it will never return. I mean, once dead, it remains dead. But the memory, through music, will summon the spirit and give me a sense of comfort as I trudge through the day. <laughs>